grab an oatmeal cream pie or ourselves some eggnog. Make sure we're wearing our comfortable shoes and we can get started. All right, so as the bridge is currently set up, you've got thermal on the left eye, image intensification on the right. You're using the dovetails on both sides with the OSS shoe set. The shoes are adjustable. Just take your three millimeter Allen wrench, loosen this set screw. It's one tiny little, I think it's a one half millimeter set screw that holds your setting in place. Let me show that right there. It's not uh, 0.5 millimeters, it's 0 0.05 inches. You can use this Allen key. This is an example of one from Crimson Trace as well. But that just goes in here, loosen this set screw, and then you can slide this shoe back and forth and even off. So you get it to where you want it. For the eye relief setting with the RH25, you want it about there. About as, honestly, about as far as you can get it. If you need to make any adjustments after this, you can further adjust this part of the bridge. And you do that with an Allen wrench right here. 7 64ths. So this setting, or this adjustment, has got holes in it. And you've got three options. So currently this is set up to have it be the closest to your face possible. If you were to push it out, one setting, it'd be further away from your face, and then one more setting, and everything would be further away from your face. The way I like to run this setup is as close to my face as I can get it. That is what she said. So in this configuration, you can see you have no contact between either optic. They don't touch each other, even with this other shoe on here. And you can fully articulate this one and this one, no problem. If you want to switch them, you will find that if you have the offset shoe here and you just try to use the same shoe, you will run into an issue where the battery housing on this side, they're, they're real, they're touching. Now, you could adjust this um, ocular collar slightly. That's actually probably the objective collar. You could adjust the objective collar so that it was turned slightly. But what I've chosen to do, just to make life simple, is to put the other shoe on the other side. Now, you do run into an offset issue here. I don't run it this way very often, but you can certainly do it. So that's... That's how it's currently set up there. So I'm going to show you another method here. You can also take this shoe off and rotate this shoe in this orientation. And you get a little bit of a better setup on both the left eye and the right eye. But you do it at a couple of expenses. First of all, sorry, I knocked the camera over. So what I was trying to explain was that you, if you want to set it up this way, you're doing it at the expense of a couple of different things. First of all, you are partially blocking this sensor. That's the onboard IR light. This is a sensor, I think. Um, and you're going to partially block that if you set it up in, in this configuration. You also, in this, when you look at this bridge, in this setup, it's in its most secure configuration right here, because this ring that clamps on only has one set screw that tightens down. 
this rib right here, when it contacts the pocket inside of there, provides one more set of, one more place of contact. And that's the most secure setup. You are giving that up in exchange for being able to turn this sideways to this point. Sort of find my lock set up there. So like everything, you gotta give a little to get a little. But that would go here, this would go there, and then you're off to the races. So then also, of course, uh, dual thermals setup is like this same on the back same on the top they're close they don't actually touch if you were like running well this is with this inner pupillary distance set up so it, you may find that you need to change your inner pupillary distance to something slightly different I have a I think I have like a six and seven eighths uh, circumference head Pretty normal size, American white boy head. This is a, I think this is a medium large helmet. Let's see if I can zoom in. Not ballistic, because I'm a loser. My inner pupillary distance is normal. So uh, with my setup, this works fine, um, both with eye vision on and with this on. But the key, the real key to be able to running these two together at the same time is this bridge and these shoes. And it's really this shoe. It's the ability to scoot this shoe back. Um, stay tuned. I am attempting to have a 3D printed option as an alternative available um, that would push this backwards so that it should line up with where a PVS-14 on a dovetail would sit. But uh, definitely still in the t and &E phase, I don't even have a production sample yet. So um, for now, <clears throat> this is the option, which works well. It's just impossible to find for you. Sorry, last thing, a million people have been asking for this also. So okay. all right, here's our guy. So G24, I'm sorry, this is G22. I chose the G22 because it has extended travel. Honestly, totally unnecessary. I think the G24 now even has extended travel built into it, making it further unnecessary to find a G22. Maybe you just like things that are tan. There we go. Okay, so let's see if I can move him down. Up, oh, locks into place there. You can bring it up further. It does not lock, though. It will fall back down. But it is locked into this place until you push this tab. And then push down. Lock that one. Lock this one. No problem. Stows like this. Then you can further stow it back against there. Bring this out. Stow it here. Bring that out there. Back down. Your adjustments on here. Fore and aft. Back and forth. This controls your height position. Sort of the angle. Sort of cantilevers up and down this way. And then this is just your straight vertical up and down. I'm going to mess up all my adjustments just to show you this. That's how much I love you. Up and down, up and down. That's how you get there. Uh, the way I do tethering doesn't really matter, but throw one on here. And on the PBS 14, it's here like so so that's your setup back down works fine counterweight I've just got the four weights that came with the Mohawk plus a uh, thousand milliamp hour battery pack 
I just originally had that as a leftover from another project. Never hurts to have power in the field. It happens to weigh just about the right size and be just about the right size to fit perfectly. So it stays. All right, good luck.